Billy Bob, Peter Pan, and Jesus walked into a bar. <laughs> Just kidding. I know you know Jesus and Peter Pan, but do you know Billy Bob? Have you found Billy Bob? Well, he's pretty famous, so you probably have at least heard of him. But just in case you haven't given your heart to Billy Bob, I'm going to introduce you to him. Billy Bob was, and still is, very special. He was said to have turned the world upside down with his ideas and ideals. He lived quite a few years ago, but pretty much everybody knows, even today, that the stories claim that Billy Bob was amazing. Billy Bob wasn't born in the normal way. His mother didn't have sex. Some divine essence entered her and she became pregnant with Billy Bob. When he was born, the king of the land tried to kill him because he thought Billy Bob might steal his throne. After that, Billy Bob disappeared for a while. He turned up again when he was about 12 years old, all intelligent and knowledgeable and causing even educated adults to be in awe of him. Everybody was like, wow, this kid is smart. Then Billy Bob disappeared again. Maybe he went to India or Egypt, but nobody really knows. What we know is that he came back at around the age of 30, thinking that he was all that in a bag of salt and vinegar potato chips. He claimed he was the son of a god and told everybody that they had to obey him and love him and put him above their own family. He even said that people who didn't believe in him would be damned. They killed Billy Bob. <laughs> That's probably not surprising, considering his arrogance. And well, truth be told, Billy Bob was a thief and also a rabble rouser. And people say he never did anything wrong, so he didn't. If Billy Bob did something wrong, it just wasn't wrong. He was allowed to determine right and wrong. So he could steal or create chaos while claiming to obey the law perfectly. But not everybody accepted that Billy Bob could do whatever he wanted. Thus, they killed him. But here's the most amazing part of the tale of Billy Bob. They say he came back from the dead. And they say that somebody said that, Billy Bob said that if you and I believe this story about Billy Bob, we won't ever die. And well, that's pretty cool, huh? Now, I know this seems incredible, and I know you want proof. I mean, you should really demand proof <laughs> before you believe that nature stopped acting like nature always acts and weird stuff happened that we know can't happen. You ought to demand a lot of proof. I get that. Well, hmm. I don't know Billy Bob, of course, and nobody I know knows him, and nobody they know knows him. But we have stories that some old people wrote about him. Now, I know, I know we have lots of stories about people. Some of the characters in the tales might not be real, and we for sure don't know if the stories about them are true. We have tales about Paul Bunyan, John Henry, and King Arthur. We don't know if these men lived and especially have to wonder about their antics. Now, these men I mentioned might not have defied science, like Billy Bob. Still, their stories don't sound real. Obviously, if they did anything that did defy science, we know that didn't happen. But Billy Bob is different. He defied science so much that nobody would expect us to believe his story. Unless it was true, right? It's too crazy not to be believed because the tellers of the story would know we're not that ignorant of the way the world works. So yeah, I know Billy Bob was real because his story is crazy. Plus, these stories were told for years before they were even written down. Maybe the tale of Paul Bunyan was told orally at first too, but there are just too many accounts from various sources about Billy Bob. Now, of course, the written accounts of Billy Bob's adventures are not all exactly the same. A few t details are off, but that's to be expected. No two people tell stories the same way. Further, Billy Bob's dad inspired the writers of Billy Bob's story. And just as Billy Bob can do evil and say it's good, his dad can contradict himself without being contradictory. And yes, the stories about Billy Bob are contradictory, but that just shows how true they are. If the writers were lying, they wouldn't have disagreed with one another. That would be stupid. Anybody then could tell that it was all a lie. 
And yes, the stories were added to and edited as time went on. The first stories didn't have all the magic woo-woo about the virgin birth and rising from the dead. But news travels slowly. The first people who wrote about Billy Bob probably just hadn't heard the whole story. That can happen. And so it's fine for other writers to fix the stories about Billy Bob as time went on. I'm sure Billy Bob's dad planned it this way. Anyway, Billy Bob performed miracles. Nobody would lie about that. Who'd believe it if it was a lie? Billy Bob turned water into wine. He walked on the sea. He raised dead people. I know this because people who believed in him said so. I can't prove that those people were honest, but hey, they believed in Billy Bob, who was divine. So they had to be honest, right? They loved and followed Billy Bob, the son of a god. So they had to be good and honest people. That makes sense, doesn't it? No, nobody mentioned Billy Bob when he was alive. And the time frame of his birth is a little confusing because of some facts in the story that don't sound true. For instance, well, actually, they couldn't be true, but just ignore all that. For instance, they say Billy Bob was born in the year the government took a census, and everybody had to return to the city where they were born. Now, I don't know what happened if a father was born in one city, a mother in another, and the children in four or five different cities, but I'm sure they worked that all out. Now, some say there was no census at all taken wherein people had to go to their native city. And that does give me pause, especially since the census that was actually taken was 10 years after the death of that evil king who wanted to kill Billy Bob. So the king couldn't have been alive when the census was taken. Also, they say the king, trying to find Billy Bob, killed all babies who were under two years old. So that poses a problem, too, because there is no record of these murders except in these stories about Billy Bob. But we shouldn't let these little inconsistencies and contradictions dissuade and detract us. They say many people believed in Billy Bob. They believed he was a magic man even back when he was alive. And just that fact alone proves that he was real. Once the stories were written down, even more people believed. That many people couldn't be fooled up two to three hundred years after the events. And they convinced millions of other people. Again, that many people can't be wrong. We must overlook any contradictions in the story, as well as anything evil that we think Billy Bob or his godly dad did. We must have simple and innocent faith in Billy Bob. Facts don't matter when we feel Billy Bob's love in our hearts. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, that old government, you know how corrupt it is. The authorities probably just messed up the records, to try to keep us from believing in Billy Bob. Or maybe it was Billy Bob's arch enemy. He does have an arch enemy. Plus, there are always naysayers. We know that. People who won't believe without proof. And I know, I said you should have proof, but come on. Don't the stories about Billy Bob stand on their own as proof? Anyway, where did we come from, if not from Billy Bob? That alone proves Billy Bob. Billy Bobbians won, Atheist Zero, mic drop. Not to mention the fact that I'm not the only one who knows this story in our damn time. You've heard it, haven't you? Surely we all know about Billy Bob, and that in itself proves that he was real and performed all that supernatural magic. His story wouldn't have survived this long if it wasn't true. We don't still have untrue stories from way back then about Demons and witches and other magical beings. Well, I mean, not that many anyway, right? So, yeah, I just know Billy Bob was real. And I know he blesses me every single day. Just the other day, I wanted a milkshake. But I needed exactly one dollar to be able to buy it. I started to leave Dairy Queen, but some woman I didn't even know laid a one dollar bill on the counter. Exactly what I needed. And she said she was going to help me pay for my milkshake. And I know that Billy Bob put it on her heart to do that for me. Stuff like that happens all the time. And I just look up and say, Billy Bob, I know that was you. 
And my heart fills up with joy knowing that Billy Bob is taking care of me all the time. You can't tell me what I feel is not real. Billy Bob proves himself to me over and over, and nothing you can say could make me believe otherwise. Billy Bob is good all the time. All the time, Billy Bob is good. Yes, I lost my job three months ago, and my landlord says I have to leave next week. I have no family, so I have nowhere to go. And it's going to be rough on the street in my wheelchair. But you know what? Billy Bob is so amazing, and I love him so much that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Anyway, I'm sure he has a good reason for all the bad things that happen to me. He works everything out for my good. Oh, one more thing. You better get to know Billy Bob if you don't know him already. Remember that you will be damned if you don't. Billy Bob doesn't take kindly to people who don't believe in him and obey him and everything. You have to give up your own free will and do Billy Bob's will instead. So I urge you to let him into your heart because otherwise his vengeance will know no bounds. But he loves you. He loves you more than your own mother loves you. Oh, I need to tell you something very important. You can't act like Billy Bob. <laughs> you can't kill people or steal or lie or take vengeance like he does. You really have to be good. You can't do evil and say you don't like Billy Bob. It doesn't work that way for you. Still, when you do good, you're being like Billy Bob because he is good. Again, evil is good when Billy Bob does it. This makes perfect sense. You just have to have the spirit of Billy Bob's dad in you to understand it. So message me and I can give you tracks and pamphlets and videos and also a book about Billy Bob. Trust me, once you experience life with Billy Bob inside you, you'll never want to be without him. Okay, that's the end of Billy Bob's story. Do you believe it? If you heard this story and knew Billy Bob held from Mare Creek, Kentucky was born in 1798 and spoke with a southern accent. Would you believe his story and worship him? Or does he have to have hailed from some magical kingdom of demons and sorcerers and zombies that existed thousands of years ago? What if your parents taught you from the womb that Billy Bob was your savior? What if all your friends believed in Billy Bob? What if somebody came to your school with felt boards and cute pictures of Billy Bob and told you Billy Bob loves you? What if the principal of your school prayed to Billy Bob at every assembly and ball game? What if the president thanked Billy Bob every time he talked to us? What if every time you turned on the TV, listened to the radio, picked up a newspaper, or opened up your computer, there were amazing stories and proclamations about wonderful Billy Bob? What if pictures people claimed to be Billy Bob, were plastered all over billboards? And what if on every street corner you saw a large, expensive shrine to Billy Bob? What if every year people all over the world celebrated a day when they pretended that they pretended to be Billy Bob's birthday? And what if every year people celebrated the day they believed Billy Bob came back to life? What if you were told from childhood that if you're good, Billy Bob will give you better gifts than others get. But, but if you're bad, he'll put a lump of coal in your stocking. Or something like that. I'm mixing up my myths a bit here. Sorry about that. What if you were told you're nothing without Billy Bob and all your self-esteem depended on believing in him? What if you were told that if you don't follow and obey Billy Bob, he will, hey Bob, he will torture you forever? That's a huge motivation, right? We're not talking about a lifetime here. We're talking about an eternity of misery. What if you were told that Billy Bob wouldn't even let you escape him, his wrath by dying? What if you were told he would bring you back from death for the very purpose of torturing you? What if you were told that if you didn't tell others about Billy Bob, then the torture your unbelieving family, friends, and neighbors would receive at Billy Bob's hands would also come down on you? That would be another big motivation, wouldn't it? Obviously, you don't want your loved ones to suffer, so you'd want to share the good news about Billy Bob with them, right? And you don't want to suffer for not telling them. You'd probably say to your loved ones, if I'm wrong, I lose nothing. But if you're wrong, you lose everything. Why not just believe? You know, as if people could just force themselves to believe in Billy Bob. 
What if you were told that if you click your heels together three times and close your eyes and wish really hard, you know, and and say, I do believe in Billy Bob, I do believe in Billy Bob, I do believe in Billy Bob, then you could make Billy Bob think you're special so that he wouldn't take revenge on you for being a human being. Or, hey, if his name weren't Billy Bob, would that help you believe? If his name were Peter Pan, would you believe his story? No? How about if his name were Jesus? Does the story have more credibility if Billy Bob changes his name to Jesus? Well, it shouldn't. Billy Bob, by any other name, still smells as crazy. But here's one more bunch of what-ifs. What if an ancient king or emperor decided that everybody had to believe in Billy Bob? What if people were killed <laughs> if they didn't believe in Billy Bob? What if most of the writings about other supposed magic men were burnt? So nobody could read them and see that lots of stories sound like Billy Bob's. What if the writings about Billy Bob were tampered with and added to through the years, making them more fantastic as time went on so that you, living today, didn't even know the first story? What if there were no record of the first story about Billy Bob? And what if you just always took it for granted that Billy Bob was real? I mean, why wouldn't you, since those you love and trust to tell you the truth have always been concerned above everything else in making you believe in Billy Bob and doing what some old manuscripts say he said he wanted? What if all this were true with Billy Bob, as it is with Jesus? Then would you believe in Billy Bob? You don't need to answer. I know the answer. Of course you would believe. Of course you would. If Billy Bobbyanity were your heritage, you'd be a Billy Bobbyan today. Listen, whether a man's name is Billy Bob, Peter Pan, or Jesus, he can't fly out a window and into the sky, or fly up off Mount Olivet in Bethany of Galilee, or from Jerusalem, whichever place in the biblical story you think is the correct place. Jesus, if he existed at all, was just another human fraud or a wise man who said some good stuff and was later turned into a supernatural man by his followers. Science is real, and the laws of science, the laws of nature, are constant. Oh, by the way, (laughs) Billy Bob's dad doesn't like when things go against nature. I mean, you know, except all those many times when he does. But he wouldn't do that, except when he does. Shh. May Billy Bob be with you. Praise his high and holy name. Give thanks unto him, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. At least until it doesn't, but let's not talk about that. Thank you all.